This is Tomo News for Tuesday, November 15th. Sniper shot stops drug smugglers in their tracks. These incredible photographs released on November 10th capture a speedboat whipping through the waters off the Caribbean, carrying 40 million pounds worth of cocaine. But one bullet from a sharpshooting sniper sank the drug smugglers fast. The boat was cruising between Puerto Rico and Venezuela. Officials say the vessel was packed with an estimated 1,000 kilos of coke. A maritime patrol aircraft flying overhead spotted the suspicious looking speedboat and radioed it in. A Royal Fleet Auxiliary tanker, known as the Wave Knight, received the call to intercept the drug smugglers. A Lynx helicopter then took on the chase from above as a Royal Marine sniper fired several warning shots to get the smugglers to stop. When the shots were ignored, the commando locked on target and fired a single bullet at the boat's engine, ending the six-hour chase in an instant. Before Coast Guard officials could board the sinking boat, the five crew members were seen dumping the blow as fast as they could. 350 kilos of cocaine were recovered from the boat, holding a street value of 14 million pounds. The drug smugglers and the remaining narcotics have been turned over to U.S. authorities in Miami Beach. Seriously, one bullet? Bad ass. Did you see, did you see my Black veteran shirt? has free meal taken away at Chili's on Veterans Day. Ernest Walker proudly served in the U.S. Army's 25th Infantry Division, Division Tropic Lightning, from 1987 to 1991. But when a customer at a Chili's restaurant called his service into question, Walker had his complimentary meal taken away by the restaurant manager. On November 11th, the Army vet was waiting for his food at a Chili's in Cedar Hill, Texas. He was with his service dog, Barack. The restaurant offers all active service members and veterans a free meal on Veterans Day as a thank you. The meal took half an hour to be served, and Walker had to go, so he asked the waitress to put it in a to-go box for him. As he was waiting for his doggy bag, he says an elderly man wearing a Trump t-shirt walked over and questioned him about his time in the military. The man, who claimed to be a World War II vet who served in Germany, didn't believe Walker was actually a veteran. A few minutes later, the manager came over and told Walker that another guest was claiming he wasn't a veteran because he was wearing his hat indoors. After providing his discharge papers and his military ID, the manager then told Walker the guest also said his dog was not a real service dog, even though he had the necessary service dog vest and documentation. That's when Ernest Walker dog? started recording. You, you're questioning my service dog now. Sure. Now, you do know it's against the law, against HIPAA regulations for you to question my service dog. Do you want to read? Do you want to read my service dog? Sure. Now, you question my military service and you question my service dog. And I've got, is this a certified? Is this a certified dog? Sir. Is this a certified dog? Sir. Is this a certified dog, sir? sir? No, I'm asking you a question. Sir. Is this a certified dog? Did you see my military uh, information? Sir. No, yes or no, first of all. I'm not answering any of your questions. No, did you, not... did you see my military information? Sir. Did you see my military information? Sir. You need this call did now. you see my military? No, I'll leave as soon as you ask my two questions. The answer is no, I'm not answering your questions. Okay, did you, questions did you see my military service? Did you see, did you see my military service? Sir, no. There. Yes, you did. Oh, so that's a lie, but you already said you did because I had that on record. Yes, you did. People right there saw you. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, you did. Well, then, if you didn't see it. Oh, you, no, now you're grabbing my food away from me? Oh, you're taking my food away from me now? I'm so sorry. I don't know if you didn't provide any documents for me. Yes, sir. Yes, I did just provide documents to you, and they saw you. I want the police call at this point. Following the unfortunate exchange, Walker posted the video to Facebook, and the story has since got back to Chili's, who have responded saying the situation has been escalated to the highest levels of the company. So far, Walker hasn't been contacted by anyone at Chili's or its ownership group, but the two sides are expected to meet this week. Hold on to your sweet tooth. McDonald's seems to be on a mission to kill us with calories, one decadent food item at a time. After unleashing chocolate-covered fries on Japan, it's now targeting unsuspecting Italians with something they won't be able to resist. Two days after humanity effed itself up, Mickey D's decided to console the world by making a dessert burger filled with everyone's favorite hazelnut spread. No meat, no cheese, no pickles, just carbs and choco hazelnutty goodness. 
But you'll have to fly to Italy if you want Nutella between your buns. And you'll probably need to have more than one, because the Sweetie con Nutella is definitely not American-sized. Might be a good idea just to make your own dessert witch. Or better yet, just eat it straight out of the jar like a proper Nutella monster. Although if the Nutella burger ever comes to our shores, uh, definitely not complaining. Teen saves little brother from vicious pit bull attack. A 15-year-old boy may lose his leg after he pulled his brother away from an attacking pit bull in Biloxi, Mississippi last week. The incident happened on Thursday when Jason Ronsonette and his five-year-old brother Bentley were playing outside. Their neighbor, Martha Broussard, told them she was about to let Cleo out of her kennel. The boys knew Cleo, who Broussard was keeping for her son. They came around to see her, and Broussard warned them to get back. Then Cleo bit Bentley. Jason quickly grabbed his little brother and placed him on top of a trash bin, but that only made him the target of the attack. It lasted 15 minutes. A neighbor struck Cleo repeatedly with a shovel, which didn't stop her, while Broussard tried to distract her with food. Finally, she was able to get Cleo back inside. A GoFundMe page has been created to help the family cover Jason's medical expenses. They're not sure whether he'll be able to keep his leg. The pit bull has yet to be euthanized. Girls basketball coach arrested for playing with students' balls. A married high school PE teacher is in jail after being arrested last week for having sexual relations with not one, not two, but three students at her school. 45-year-old Nicole Amon, also the girls' basketball coach at Port Berry High School in Louisiana, has admitted to having sexual intercourse with two male students. Amon allegedly sent nude photos of herself to the boys, aged 17 and 18. By the way, her poor husband also works in the school's athletics department. The authorities were tipped off by a concerned parent, and the boys showed them the raunchy photos. Amond also admitted to kissing a third student. Although all three teens were above the age of consent, there's a law in Louisiana that prohibits relationships between teachers and kids at their schools. Port Berry Police Chief Dion Boudreaux said his office has been getting complaints of teachers having sex with students at the school for years including a separate complaint last week. But this is the first time they've been able to get evidence. Chinese boy gets electric plug embedded in his head. A toddler in Guangzhou, China, was almost killed after an accident led to him getting impaled by an electrical plug. Two-year-old Xiao Tang was hanging out on a bed with his uncle when he slipped on one of the marbles they were playing with. The boy fell with his head landing directly on the prongs of an electric plug on the floor. His family rushed him to the hospital, where doctors said he needed emergency surgery. Each of the two centimeter long prongs were embedded into his skull and had already damaged a blood vessel. If anyone had pulled the plug out, Xiao Tang could have bled to death. Doctors operated on the toddler for three hours, eventually removing the plug safely. He is now recovering and could be discharged from the hospital in two weeks. The horrific injury is not expected to cause any issues in the long run, though doctors say they will continue to monitor the boy's condition. Lucky kid. Deputy rescued by good guy with a gun. A man with a concealed weapons license killed a suspect who was fighting with a police officer on Monday morning in Estero, Florida. Deputy Dean Bardez was working a crash on Interstate 75 when a car reportedly drove past him at around 120 miles per hour. According to reports, Bardez chased the reckless driver for several miles in a high-speed pursuit. Things got violent when they stopped. A witness said the driver got out of the car and tackled Bardez. He was allegedly armed. The suspect was reportedly beating on Bardez when an armed civilian ordered him to stop. The suspect elected not to comply with that order, and because of that, the civilian reportedly unloaded three rounds into him. Bardez managed to get away from the suspect and was treated at a local hospital and later released. Authorities are trying to determine if the civilian was justified in shooting the suspect. But what's your take? Sound off below and let us know. Technology puts autonomous vehicles in the driving seat. A future in which self-driving vehicles travel our roads is edging closer as automakers introduce an ever-increasing range of innovations to their cars. 
One example of smart car technology is Ford's blind spot warning system. Radar sensors in the tail light detect other vehicles in the driver's blind spot and trigger a warning light in the side mirrors when it's unsafe to change lanes. Those radar sensors also detect oncoming vehicles when the vehicle is backing out of a parking spot. Other parking assistants already on the market include a feature in several Ford models that tells the driver when to hit the accelerator or brake. Meanwhile, some BMW drivers can already park their cars by pushing a button on a key fob. Today's cars use radar, sonar, cameras, or a combination of all three for active cruise control. This feature allows the car to drive autonomously at a fixed speed or at the speed of the vehicle in front, slowing down and speeding up automatically. However, the vehicle will emit a warning if the driver needs to take evasive action. The technology preps the brakes and will even brake automatically if the driver doesn't react in time. Some Mercedes cars can tell the difference between a four-legged and a two-legged obstacle and will brake harder for people. Cameras in today's cars can be used to detect lane markings and warn drivers to stay in their lane. This is designed to help tired drivers but in practice often applies to those who are texting on their cell phones. If lane warnings aren't heated, this technology can steer the car back into the correct lane by hitting the brakes or turning the steering wheel. Tesla's electric cars are already capable of driving on autopilot and changing lanes without the driver's input. In the near future, we should expect to see traffic jam autopilot, which will allow drivers to take their hands off the wheel in heavy traffic and let the car do the work. Looking further ahead, automakers are working on autonomous valet parking, which will see cars drop passengers off, find their own parking space, then pick the passengers up when summoned by smartphone. However, we are still quite some time away from when every vehicle on the road is an autonomous one. But thanks to advances made by automakers, that day hopefully isn't too far away. Study could explain why seabirds eat ocean plastic. The corruption of a natural process that directs seabirds toward food is tricking the animals into eating plastic floating in the ocean. When krill eat algae, the plants emit a sulfurous compound called dimethyl sulfide, which has a strong smell. The smell gives a chemical signal to seabirds about where they can find their prey. Plastic floating in the ocean accumulates organic matter including dimethyl sulfide. According to researchers, the plastic then emits an odor that entices seabirds to eat it. Five trillion pieces of plastic are reportedly littering the world's oceans, weighing a total of 250,000 tons. More than 200 species of marine life have been found to eat plastic, including birds, fish, turtles, and mammals. According to the projections of another recent study, 99% of all seabird species will have eaten plastic by 2050. Doctors grow patients' ear on his arm. A Chinese hospital is in the midst of a most peculiar feat, creating a human ear almost entirely from the human body alone. According to Chinese state media, plastic surgeons in Shanxi province have grown an ear on a patient's arm after he lost it in a car accident one year ago. Several months ago, a dilator was inserted into the man's right forearm. The arm received daily water injections to create a thin and stretched layer of skin. Next, the hospital removed parts of the patient's rib cage cartilage and then modeled those into the structure of an ear. This cartilage model was then inserted into the expanded skin, which was formed around it in the shape of a human ear. The next part of the process, transplanting the new ear to the patient's head, will take around three or four months. The patient, identified only as G, had reportedly suffered psychological trauma following the accident. Buddy says the new ear looks exactly like his...